And I want the American people to know uh, what a Kentuckian is and, and what they look like, because let me just tell you that J.D. Vance ain't from here. <laughs> now, it, it, the nerve that he has to call the people of Kentucky, of Eastern Kentucky, lazy. Listen, these are the hardworking coal miners that, that powered the Industrial Revolution, that created the strongest middle class the world has ever seen, uh, powered us through two world wars. We should be thanking them, not calling them lazy. You just heard from Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir, who is a potential running mate for Kamala Harris, along with three other contenders, including Mark Kelly, senator from Arizona, Josh Shapiro, governor of Pennsylvania, and Roy Cooper, governor of North Carolina. Now, of these four choices, Bashir is by far and away my favorite. He is a genuine populist with a lot of appeal to lefties, but not enough to worry centrist Democrats. And on top of that, he's good at politics because He's effective and he just doesn't take Republican bait. What I mean by that is last year, Republicans, they passed a sweeping ban on gender affirming health care for trans youth, and they basically dared him to veto it so that way they can attack him as being a child mutilator. But guess what he did? He vetoed it anyway and went on to win re-election. He basically looked at the policy and said, you know what, I'm going to do what's best for my constituents. So he's one of the few Democrats that just don't cower in fear at the thought of what Republicans might say if you do something that's good for the people who you're supposed to be representing. Now, him attacking J.D. Vance is something that I love to see because he is essentially auditioning to be Kamala's VP pick. And aside from that, you know, he's posting videos on social media, semi ads that are meant to hype him up. But him right there taking a shot at J.D. Vance is really important and smart. Because not only is he telling Kamala, hey, you want me to be an attack dog, I'm already doing it, but he's attacking J.D. Vance in a way that is really, really effective because he basically forced them to respond. He's calling him a fake populist. Now, for some additional context, the Cincinnati Inquirer reports Vance's Appalachian roots have been a point of contention as the Ohio senator offered a critical view of the region in his 2016 memoir, Hillbilly Elegy. Vance spent time with extended family in Jackson, Kentucky over the years, but spent much of his childhood in Middletown, Ohio. So his connection to the state of Kentucky is tenuous at best. Furthermore, there's people in Kentucky that took issue with the way that he portrayed Kentuckians. So the thinking is, how dare he, who's not really from here, portray us as a certain way that we find insulting? You know, we're dumb, we're lazy. I reject that. So Bashir is trying to exploit one of his main vulnerabilities. He's trying to expose him as a fake populist who's really not actually down with the working class, especially the people in Kentucky, like he says he is. Now, you know that he hit a sore spot because Vance's spokesperson was forced to respond, writing, quote, Senator Vance has always said that he was raised in Middletown, Ohio, but his family's ancestral home is Jackson, Kentucky. J.D. grew up spending his summers in Appalachia and came from a poor family, something Andy Bashir could never relate to because he grew up with a silver spoon in his mouth thanks to his politician lawyer daddy. Unlike Bashir, who rode his father's coattails into the governor's mansion, Senator Vance has had to earn everything he's accomplished in his life. In other words, they're basically responding by saying, no, you. Now, look, if I'm on Vance's team, I'm just letting that attack roll off my shoulders and I'm going to play it cool. Not going to respond to it. But the fact that they felt compelled to respond speaks to the strength of Bashir as a running mate for Kamala Harris. He already knows how to get under J.D. Vance's skin and having an attack dog as your running mate isn't necessarily a bad thing. But to be fair, it's not that difficult to humiliate J.D. Vance since he's already kind of doing Bashir's job for him if Bashir were to be the running mate. But let me show you what I mean by that. Here's a clip from J.D. Vance at a recent Trump rally. It is the weirdest thing to me. Democrats say that it is racist to believe. Well, they say it's racist to do anything. I had a Diet Mountain Dew yesterday and one today. I'm sure they're going to call that racist too, but it's good. <laughs> I love you guys. But <laughs> that was painful. This man has absolutely no charisma. And I don't think he understands that he doesn't get to ramble on about nothing because Trump does. Like Trump is a unique beast and his supporters love his old man stories in the way that he tells them. But J.D. Vance, 
doesn't have the charisma to do that. You know, him joking about how Democrats think Diet Mountain Dew is racist isn't charming. It's cringeworthy. So if you put Andy Bashar against this creep, I think that he mops the floor with him at a debate, which is something that you want in a VP pick. Now, he also picked at more of Vance's weaknesses in that same interview. J.D. Vance calls pregnancy arising from rape inconvenient. No, it's just plain wrong. He suggests that uh, women should stay in, in, in abusive relationships. Uh, listen, a domestic abuser isn't a man, he's a monster, and no one should support anyone having to stay in those relationships. And he's right. I'm really glad that Democrats are bringing up Vance's extreme social conservatism because Americans view issues like no-fault divorce as settled. So it's an immediate non-starter and a massive turnoff to so many people, including some Republicans, I'd imagine. Now, in that same interview, Bashir endorsed Kamala Harris and made it pretty clear that he's open to being her running mate. Now, that's what I want to see. Um, I want to see somebody who's hungry, who's ready to fight Republicans, and who has actually fought and beat Republicans. And he's right there saying, I'm one phone call away, Kamala. So I really hope that it's gonna be Bashir. Um, you know, I think that he is somebody who is able to control the GOP narrative and would be an asset on that ticket. And, you know, he has far more appeal than other Democratic contenders who are considered top contenders. Like Mark Kelly, he might be too much of a centrist to really bring anything. I get that he's from Arizona, which, is a state that Democrats are currently trailing in. So it makes sense from a political standpoint, like in that regard, Shapiro's the same way. He's from Pennsylvania, a state Democrats have to win. But at the same time, he's more of a centrist and doesn't have as much appeal as somebody like Bashir, who's in a red state and has proven to be very effective. He appeals to left-wingers. He appeals to centrist Democrats. He's kind of like, he's got the biggest net in terms of catching other Democrats, right? He's also opposed to charter schools, which is good. He's an economic populist. So I think that he's able to kind of bring the party together. Although with that being said, I don't necessarily know that the running mate matters all that much, but to the extent that it does matter, I think that her having a running mate like Bashir would be an asset, right? Whereas another person could be a liability. For example, Shapiro, he's somebody who he supports banning BDS. During this time, Democrats are struggling because of the Gaza issue, because Biden enabled a genocide. So Harris has the difficult task right now of differentiating herself from Joe Biden. And we've gotten some clear indications that maybe she wants to do that, but we have to wait and see. But that's already a struggle. So you don't want to bring somebody who might be a lightning rod to Democrats who are concerned about Gaza, also bringing on a centrist like Mark Kelly after we've just experienced the mansion and cinema years, not the best strategy in my opinion. But again, at the end of the day, you know, I don't think that the VP is gonna make that big of a difference, but you know, having somebody like Bashir, I think would add a lot to the ticket, especially when you contrast him with Trump's choice of J.D. Vance, because J.D. Vance is a fake populist and Bashir is an anti-fake populist. He's a real populist. That's what you want to see. That's exactly the antidote to J.D. Vance. So look, I'm personally rooting for Bashir, but at the end of the day, I don't think it matters too much in the grand scheme of things. But in the event Kamala were to pick him, I think it would be a great decision.